Today we're talking about typography. This is a huge area and I recommend taking the typography class in which we will go over much, much more in-depth information about typography. Um, as you can see, what I've done here is, is put the dictionary definition and that is the composition of printed material from movable type. All of these little pieces in here we talked about before um, these are what, what are called movable type. So these are actual lead pieces of type. Every drawer um, in a letterpress studio has the name of uh, the typeface on it and then it has the bold and the semi-bold and the light and whatever comes with that typeface within the drawer. And so every little piece has to be taken out and placed in a composition stick. Um, right now what we want to focus on is uh, the terms kerning and letting. Kerning means the space between two letters uh, you know, in a word. So if you see a word and you just want to space out or give a little more space between two letters, that would be kerning the type. Um, so kerning is adjusting the space between a pair of letters. And these are just these little charts that show you this is before kerning this A and T and this A and T is after kerning which just means that the space between those two letters has been pulled in. This chart to the left shows you that this was done with movable type before so you would have to find a piece of type, uh, lead, of lead type with that extra little piece of T to put inside or take away to add space. You see how this right here, this piece of T is actually with the Y. And on the bottom, these little bars, you would line up the pieces of type and make sure that these this little groove lined up and that's how you would know that the, the type is lined up correctly. Tracking means adjusting the space between all of the letters at the same time. So it's like if you're on the computer in any program, word, whatever, and you click and drag over the entire word and then it spaces everything evenly, that's called tracking. So you see how this is very tight tracking, real close to each other, normal tracking, and then loose tracking. And these are always, uh, are often design decisions. So this little diagram here to the left, these little blue pieces, um, these would be pieces of actual lead that you would put in between each piece of type to track everything. So the piece of lead, these are the same um, thicknesses. And then here's an example using Diablo Valley College. So sometimes when you first look at this, they look exactly the same, but on the bottom I've put, can you see where the letters have been kerned? So if you look between the V and the A, for example, like right here, there's a little bit too much space. So what you're going to be doing after this class is really you'll be you're, you'll have a heightened awareness to tracking and kerning because when you just type a word it doesn't necessarily do the tracking and kerning just right. You may see that there's just way too much space here so you can put your cursor right in the middle and the trick in Illustrator is to hold option and your little tiny arrows on the right side of the keyboard and you can move the tracking and kerning around that way. There are other ways to do it but that's, a, that's an easy way to do it. So it is the designer's job to look and see what does not appear right and fix it. I mean, if you were to just do two words and then blow them up into a sign, any little kerning issue would be huge. It would really look like this was a very large space. So here are some sort of photographs of real movable type, real, real lead type. So here's a piece, this M. Um, and the point size of the type refers to this entire piece of lead because of the piece of metal type and that's because the lowercase and uppercase has to fit within this entire piece of lead. It's the body size of the type. So, if, so if we're talking about leading, which means the space in between lines of type, these are actual pieces of lead that would go in between the lines of type and that spaces the lines of type out uh, and that would be 
where the term letting comes from. So 12 point type with 14 points of line spacing would be called 12 over 14. So that's what um, the standard letting is, uh, two points. It's actually just a little more, just a little over two points. But if you just put in auto letting, that will be about two points. So that's 12 over 14. That's called auto letting. And then, as you can see here, this image to the left is the real type, uh, the real lead type with the spacing in between. Here are some paragraphs. These are examples. This is the typeface Garamond, and these are sort of various lettings with the paragraphs so that you can see. This is 9 over 9. So as you know now that the standard is two extra points, so this is too tight. And as you can, it's just hard to read type that's the, where, where the letting is too tight. This is 9 over 10.8, so they're calling that default letting. Um, it's a little bit lower than default letting, but that's, that's just about normal. This one is 9 over 11, slightly bigger letting, so you get sort of this better shade of gray. So if you can think of type in terms of a shade of gray and what looks comfortable, and this gives you a lot of nice space to read. This is 9 over 13, so if you have, if you have it too open and you have too much space, it's harder to read the type. As a design decision, often it looks really nice to have a lot of letting. Certainly not for all of your body copy, but maybe for a poem or for a little caption. Here are some samples. This is um, this is a sample. Very large tracking. Very see, see all of the the letters have lots of space in between them, and there's a lot of letting here, and that's a design decision. That is because, because of the content of the type. I hope you enjoy this experience. So you're having an experience reading this type, plus it's on pink. So this is a design decision, and this is why you would use large letting and tracking. So if you see this word embarrassed, which is tiny, and aggressive, which is huge, and all uppercase and bold, Again, this is, this is a design decision and it's to express the feeling of that word. So embarrassed might feel very small and in the corner and aggressive is just huge and on the bottom and even cut off on the sides. And for this one, it's notice the hierarchy here. <clears throat> you read the large type first, which says not important, and the small type next. Please read this before the above. So this isn't a good example of hierarchy because if you wanted someone to read, please read this before the above, you would have to have that be the big type. And here are some examples of the use of type to create the feeling of the word and the meaning of that word. So breathe, we have a large letter and a small letter and a large letter and a small letter and a large and a small and a swoosh here which feels like breathing. And move, you have that space between it because it's as if this moved away. Not sure if that feels like dream. But eat, this is very clever. It looks like there's a bite out of the A. This is a great example of very tight letting um, to portray a message. So is this what your current office space feels like? So this is a great idea because by making the, the letting negative, um, then you've got these the type overlapping. And, and they've also used, notice, um, they've used a narrow font a condensed font, so it really smashes in and feels very cramped. And this design creates the illusion of sound. This is a great one, crash. The type treatment creates the illusion of what the word means. So you've got the word and you're kind of 
I don't know how this was done, but in Illustrator you could use the brush and draw lines on top of this type. And you see how there's a lot of space here? So you've got space between the C and the R and the R and the A, and it just gets closer and closer until the S and the H are sort of um, kerned right next to each other. So in this way you would put the cursor here and create more space, and then here you would hold the option and then the, the arrow to the left, and here the same thing. Give and take. Style. This is clever because of these little money symbols. Be heard. Another clever idea, just using type. You see all of these sentences behind and the background and they're overlapping one another and it's just hard to make out what that is and it feels like many people talking at the same time. And then and notice that the type in the background is a serif font, so it has these little feet. And then the type that's used that you can read is in white and it's a sans serif font and it just stands out. It's almost like using sound, but you don't have any sound, you're just using type. Demon. So this could be a hand drawn or it could be a font that was typed. And then if you go to type create outlines and use the white arrow in Illustrator, you can actually you can pull points up like this and alter your type. So this word hate is sort of eaten into and really feels like what it means. And then we have this one, which is simple and kind of cute, with the spook has the eyes in it. This one's a little hard to see, but it says, are we losing our senses? And in the back are the senses. So there's hearing, it's hard for me to even see this, taste, sight, um, smell, touch. So those are in a lighter gray, and they're behind the black type. So there's just a, a lot that can be portrayed with only type. This is a clever idea for a logo, smush, and it's the M and the U are smushed together. The familiar stranger, so these little letters are kind of peeking through and it feels kind of creepy. Whoosh, and notice the H which is tilted to the right and kind of pushes everything and creates movement. And then this one is, I like this because you're taking this very sort of beautiful script and kind of eating into it somehow. Um, and then this word, which I won't say on here, is another kind of type entirely, which looks like it's kind of stamped in there. And by using the color pink, it sort of conceptually con contrasts with what it says. Museum without walls. So that's clever because it's made walls, made sides of a, a building. Water, another clever logo by using a drop in, in this A. So this could be by using a, a typeface that is already on the computer and then altering the A. So each of these sentences here has to be typed separately. If not, every, wor every letter would have to be typed separately so that it can be rotated. So this takes a lot of work, but it really does feel like it's being smashed.